Mariano Rivera is the greatest closer in MLB history. He's a Hall of Famer, the only one to get 100% of the vote, the all-time saves leader, an iconic Yankee, and a man who had all of this bubble up into a playing of Metallica's Enter Sandman whenever he'd take the mound at Yankee Stadium. Which is not actually going to play here because of copyright. But what if I told you, in spite of all of that, he's actually somewhat underrated? It shouldn't be possible. Mariano Rivera being better than you think? Someone who's the greatest at their role in baseball history actually being underappreciated and even better than you remember? Believe it. Now's as good a time as any to do this because relief pitchers are objectively more untouchable than ever before. Why not give the king a few more crowns, so to speak? What we're gonna do here is go through nuggets of information from Mariano's career that peel back the layers of just how dominant he really was. And if you enjoy what you see here today, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Under a quarter of you watching are subscribed. It really does help out more than you can imagine. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy sports. In Underdog's Pick'em game, you make simple predictions about stats, and you answer the very simple question of higher or lower. These include so many categories like hits, home runs, singles, walks, strikeouts, everything you can think of for the most part. I do enjoy the variety because it means you can get weird with it. Making a prediction as simple as somebody getting a single can be pretty fun sometimes. You know, for all my low rarity score demons on the Immaculate Grid, Underdog's Pick'em Game is not team or draft based at all. You just hone in on specific individuals every day. Underdog's Pick'ems are available in 30 US states, so be sure to double check if yours is eligible to participate in their contests. Getting started is pretty simple. Use code SRS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. That doesn't mean you have to put in $100. Say you put $1 in, they'll give you another dollar up to $100. Again, that's code SRS on underdogfantasy.com or Underdog Fantasy in the App Store. Gotta give a huge thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this video, and please play responsibly. A very common answer for the greatest relief season of all time is Eric Gagne's 2003 for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Gagne won the Cy Young Award and just dominated coming in. Jerry Blevins made the comparison of Gagne's season to Jacob deGrom's 2021. I think about Eric Gagne's season with the Dodgers when he won the Cy Young. Which was on pace to be the best pitching season of all time before injuries stole that from us. Why do I bring this up? Rivera had a season like that too, when he was 38 years old. And that's not even his highest war season. We'll get to that one later. War is a stat that tries to measure how many more wins a team would get because they had you instead of a replacement level player who plays the same position. Relievers have trouble making a dent here sometimes, even at their absolute best, because of how little they're actually on the field. Like, Michael A. Taylor and Edwin Diaz had the same baseball reference war in 2022. Rivera broke four war in four different seasons, which is typically a threshold considered all all-star level for all players, not just relievers. Craig Kimbrell has a strong case to be the most dominant reliever since Mariano Rivera. His career war is 23.1. John Franco has the most saves of any left-handed pitcher of all time. His career war is 23.4. Mariano Rivera's is 56.3, blowing by everyone except Dennis Eckersley, who had 361 starts in his career too. Don't even try telling me Mariano was also a starter because he made 10 starts as a rookie in 1995. Jaws is the stat that balances career war with 7 year peak war to try and factor in a player's longevity as well. Disqualifying Dennis Eckersley again, Mariano absolutely obliterates every other reliever in baseball history. That's because he was really good for really long. From the Bill Clinton administration all the way till after Mitt Romney ran for president, Mariano Rivera was good every single year, without fail. His run of dominance started the year Wuha by Buster Rhymes dropped, and ended the year Wake Me Up by Avicii dropped. Side note, Wake Me Up by Avicii slaps. That's like the most basic trait about me, is that opinion. In all that time, his ERA went over three just once. He still saved 30 games in that one, and I am strongly using finger quotes here, 
bad season. His ERA was under two in 11 seasons, which considering he was usually only going for one inning at a time, he was the ultimate brick wall. On top of just racking up saves, teams were lucky to score two runs off him for every nine times he pitched. And he was doing this well into his 40s. In 2013, at age 43 and in his final big league season, he had 44 saves with a 211 ERA and 190 ERA+. I like ERA+, it's a good stat. ERA+, takes a pitcher's earned run average, which is how many runs they're responsible for giving up every nine innings of work, and puts them all on a level playing field where 100 is always average. His worst one ever for a full season was 144. At his worst, he was still almost 50% better than the average pitcher around him. For his career, he was more than twice as good. The all-time MLB record holder for ERA Plus is Mr. Mariano Rivera. Nobody was better than their competition at preventing runs from scoring, which is, you know, kind of the name of the game of pitching. You may know the legend that Mariano did all this with more or less one pitch. That's kind of true. Baseball writer Mark Carrig, who once viscerally annihilated the team he covered because someone insulted the basketball team he loves, once put out a metric that Mariano Rivera threw a cut fastball a little over 85% of the time. In 2009, according to Baseball Savant, he threw it 93% of the time. That's a really insane rate for one pitch in baseball. So in layman's terms, he basically did do it with one pitch. But that makes him all the more impressive, not a lucky one-trick pony. You may contend that only someone like Jacob deGrom can be a good pitcher because he has three plus pitches. In his case, a fastball, a changeup, and a slider. He's also got a really good curveball that he just doesn't use. Of course that's your contention. You only just started watching baseball this week. If Mariano was throwing the same pitch 85 or 90% of the time, hitters knew it was coming. The pitch was so good that hitters just could not hit it. Or if they did, their bats were shattering, especially the left-handed hitters. A true baseball fan born in 1872 would see that Mariano has a staggering two less wins than DeGrom lifetime, and just call the Mariano versus DeGrom debate right there. Also, yes, a guy with 10 career starts only has two less wins than a guy that has a case to be the best in human history at pitching, with 215 starts. Mariano's cutter worked because it wasn't the same experience for right-handed hitters and left-handed hitters. Righties would see the ball tail away from them like a traditional slider almost, but at fastball-type velocity. Lefties would be crowded in and jammed. Both outcomes were beneficial to Mariano way more often than not. If you ever hear the Mariano had just one pitch argument, that shouldn't be to discredit him. It's not like the Michael Jordan played against plumbers or the 2020 Dodgers have a Mickey Mouse ring cliche buzz phrases. It should be a compliment. Hitters got to see the hand he was dealing them before the at-bats started and he'd still win. Think of it like if you were playing poker with him, he would show you the cards he was gonna beat you with and then he lit you on fire after. Mariano didn't throw 100 miles an hour, but he had his cutter. It would break and he could locate it. In his words, what he did for 19 years was hit corners, go up and in or down and away, and throw strikes. And boy did he, for longer than some of you have been alive. But don't get me wrong, he threw his cutter hard. Even when he was 43 years old, his average cutter was faster than the MLB average cutter. 43 years old doing that. WHIP is a pretty simple pitching stat to understand. It's an acronym for walks plus hits per innings pitched. Mariano's was .87, which is fantastic, and it means he usually gets through his ninth inning without anyone getting on base. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied a little bit. His WHIP was .87 from when he was 38 years old to the end of his career. Even when he was a baseball dinosaur, nobody was getting on base against him. In his last season, he was the same age JFK was when he was elected President of the United States, and Mariano was still shutting down big league hitters left, right, and central. His career whip was an even one, 
just so you know. You ever hear about Mariano's first season out of the bullpen though? The one I was alluding to earlier with his highest career war in a season? In 1996, Rivera pitched 107 innings of relief, which is almost as many as Tyler Glasnow has ever thrown in a season as a starter. He racked up five war, tied for the most of any reliever since that one guy we keep disqualifying came along. He had the highest strikeout per inning rate of his career. He allowed just one home run in the whole season, in the middle of the steroid era, and once went 14 straight innings without giving up a single hit. He was also 23rd in strikeouts in the entire American League. Remember, as a reliever, starters were still supposed to more or less give you seven innings in 1996. They were lasting deep into games and seasons. Please indulge me here, because I actually counted on this one. 310 men pitched in American League games in 1996. Mariano had more strikeouts than all but 22 of them. In the top 7% of all AL pitchers in strikeouts as a reliever, he would have led two AL teams in strikeouts that season. Again, as a reliever with only 107 and two thirds innings pitched in his first season as a relief pitcher, and this is just buried in baseball obscurity for nerds like me to come and tell you on the internet. It seems impossible for Mariano to have ever gotten better than this, unless the playoffs rolled around. In 141 innings pitched in the postseason, almost 10 more than Spencer Strider had in all of 2022, his ERA was .70. 0.7. If postseason Mariano Rivera was placed into a single season, it would be the greatest run any pitcher had ever seen at that kind of volume. Even better than 2021 DeGrom. I know that I've kind of turned Jacob DeGrom into the secondary character of this story, but look at how often I can compare Mariano to him. A bullpen guy versus a starter. A two-time Cy Young winner and demigod of modern pitching versus someone who would only go one inning at a time. That's just unbelievable to me, and something I would have never thought about until I sat down to research this. He was also never overwhelmed with control issues or nerves in the big moments, walking just 21 batters total in those 141 postseason innings. It's often considered a historical moment in baseball history if you manage to beat him in the postseason, and that's because he was the immovable object to every unstoppable offensive force. He only ever allowed more than one earned run in any particular postseason appearance once. He pitched in 96 different postseason games. One time did anyone ever scrounge more than one earned run off him in a postseason game. That's in part because he only ever gave up two postseason home runs. In all those games and all those innings, two home runs. This man single-handedly prevented other teams from having storybook moments against the Yankees over an 18-year span, except for only one or two smudges. You want to know how rare those smudges are? I did save one of the most cliché Mariano facts for last. If you've heard it, I hope you now have a newfound appreciation for it. If you haven't, this puts his untouchable dominance when it mattered most into the ultimate perspective. Pitching 141 innings and 96 career postseason games, more men have walked on the moon than scored on Mariano Rivera in the postseason. Okay, fine. I changed my mind. I'll play Enter Sandman. In the Super Mario 64 sound font. 